All right, 4.1, imaginary numbers and complex numbers. So solve the quadratic by what we already know how to do, square rooting. So in that case, we're going to add 5 to both sides. That will give us 2x squared equals negative 23 plus 5. We minus, we add 5 to this, we're going to get negative 18. Divide by 2. And we get x squared equals negative 9. Now, up to this point, what would we do? We would square root this, and that would cancel. And we would say, well, we cannot take the square root of this value. So we would say no solution. Okay? That's up to this point. We are now going to learn how to deal with that. So what is an imaginary number? In order to work with the square root of a negative, mathematicians came up with a symbol, i, for imaginary. So i equals the square root of negative 1. We can now use this symbol to help us actually simplify and work out the square root of any negative number. So, the square root of 4, negative 4, all right? In the past, we would have said no solution, but now we're going to be able to deal with it. I'm going to step back for a second. So, consequently, if I squared this on both sides, I would end up with i squared equals, this undoes the square root, negative 1. So, if I rewrote this as negative 1 times 4, that's negative 4. This negative 1 is going to come out as an i. All right? And then the square root of 4 is 2. Now, just a note, that's the answer right there. But, and we'll get to this later, we'll come back up again. If this was like so, and we were solving, if we were solving, the answer would be plus or minus 2i. So whenever we're solving, we throw that plus or minus in. So next one, square root of negative 25. You can also just think of it. You don't have to really break it down with the negative 1 unless you need to. Otherwise, you can just take the square root of 25, which is just 5, and then the negative comes out as an i. Now this one is different. Notice where the negative is. The negative is on the outside. So what is the square root of 36? 6. And then... We're going to take the opposite of that, negative 6. Totally different thing. We can take the square root of 36. Earlier in the semester, we would not have had any issue with that. Now, we're simplifying. So here, we're going to break this down. And remember, we're going to put the magic number first. So 9 is a perfect square that goes into 54. And again, if it helps you to think about it like this, do it. All right, so the square root of 9 is 3. The negative 1 comes out as an i, and the 6 is left inside. All right, this one, 80, again, is 16 times 5. We're looking on our reference cards, and 16 is the perfect square number that goes into 80. And if it helps, put that negative 1 there. So 16 comes out as a 4. The negative 1 comes out as i, and the 5 is stuck inside. Okay, I've already alluded to this, so that's negative 1. Okay. Next, breaking down. Real numbers are numbers like 3, negative 5, 10. Imaginary numbers, we just said, are numbers like i, maybe negative 3i, or 2i. A complex number is when we put these two together. So if I have something like 5 minus 3i, that is a complex number. Note, standard form is always put the real number first and put the imaginary number second. All right, operations. Now, I want you to think about this. It's not exactly the same, but if you had 5 minus 3x, let's step back to what we know, plus 
negative 2 plus 6x. We would just join the like terms, right? Since this is positive, it doesn't do anything to this parentheses. We don't even really need the parentheses. So this is the same thing. These parentheses really mean nothing when we're doing a, an addition problem. All right? So we would combine 5 minus 2, which is 3, and negative 3x plus 6x is 3x. And that would be our answer. All right? Well, same concept here. We're going to join like terms. 5 minus 2 is still 3, but instead of an x, we have negative 3i and 6i. So that ends up being a plus 3i. Same idea. Variable, okay? This is a variable, but it's a very special one. It has a meaning. But I want you to see the concept that it's really no different than adding x's or y's or p's or q's. It will come in a little bit different when we multiply, but we'll get to that. Now, just like before, this is subtracting the second parentheses. So we're going to distribute the negative. And that's going to give us 10 plus 6i. We really don't need those parentheses. And once we distribute, that'll be minus 15 plus 11i, because the negative 11i becomes positive. And now we're just joining like terms. 10 minus 15 is negative 5. 6i plus 11i, same as 6x plus 11x, is 17i. Okay, now, here, before we add, again, the parentheses aren't going to be that important because it's addition, but we need to distribute the 2. So 2 times 7 is 14. 2 times negative 4i is negative 8i. Distribute the 5. Plus 5 times 11 is plus 55. And 5 times negative 9 is negative 45i. And now we're going to join like terms. 55 plus 14 is 69. Negative 8i minus 45i is going to be more negatives. All right. So minus 53i. Now, here's where it's a little bit different. Let's think about this. If I had 3x times 5 plus 6x, and I distributed, I would get 15x plus 18x squared. Okay, so this is where it's a little bit different. It's not just a variable because they have meanings. So we're still gonna distribute the same way, and we get the same numbers. 3 times 5 is 15, so it's 15i, 7x plus 18i squared. Now, if you go back, remember, we said i squared was equal to negative 1. So what I like to do is put in parentheses immediately and put a negative 1 here and get rid of that. So really, this becomes negative 1, which I'm going to multiply by the 18. So that gives me 15i minus 18. And remember, standard form, we always want to put that number first. So we have negative 18 plus 15i, because this is a positive number here. But we always want to put the i second. Okay? So anytime you see negative, an i squared, put in parentheses, cross it out, and replace it with a negative 1. That's the easiest thing to do. All right, now we're multiplying, double distributing, foiling, whatever. So first times first is 8. Outer times outer, negative 7 times 4 is negative 28. I tags along. The inside, 2 times 3 is positive 6. The I tags along. And very careful here, positive times a negative. 7 times 3 is 21. And then I squared. So remember, this I squared is going to become a negative 1. So this isn't an I anymore. This is going to change that negative 21 to positive 21. So I have 8, I'm going to join these terms, negative 22i, the negative 21 times negative 1 becomes plus 21, and I'm going to combine my like terms, 29 minus 22i. All right, squaring it. Remember, this is the same thing as this. And for some people, they feel more comfortable foiling it this way. There is the same shortcut we've used before, which is square the first term, 
25. Square the last term, 9i squared. I'll come back to that i squared in a minute. Multiply, 3 times 5 is 15, and double it, plus 30i, plus 9i squared. Again, if you feel like working it out, that's fine. 5 times 5 is 25. My outer is 15i. My inner is also 15i, hence the multiply and double that we did here because this is going to give me 30i, and then plus 9i squared. So remember, i squared, I'm going to put in parentheses, cross out and put negative 1, which is going to make the 9 negative. Now, if you want to skip the step of writing it and just subtract 9 from 25, that's fine. All right, and that's going to give me 16 plus 30i. And we'd have the same thing over here. This would lead to right here. No matter which way you do, it doesn't matter. Your personal choice. All right. Now, we're going to rationalize again. Just like we could not have certain things in the bottom before, we cannot have an i. So what we're going to do is we're going to rationalize. And we're going to rationalize by multiplying by 2i top and bottom here. Now, when I do that, don't forget to distribute. So that's going to give me 14i, 2 times 7 is 14, minus 2 times 4 is 8i squared, which again is really just negative 1. So that's going to make the negative 8 positive. On the bottom, I end up with 4i squared. Again, I'm going to cross that out and put negative 1. Now let's clean it up. On the top, I have 14i plus 8, because the negative 1 made the negative 8 positive. And in the bottom, I have negative 4. Okay? Now, since everything is even, I'm going to reduce it. I'm going to simplify it. Okay? The negative can go wherever you want. But basically, I have, you know, 7 over 2. And this is going to become 2. So what I have is, on the top, 2 plus 7i over negative 2. Now, you cannot cancel these because of the plus sign here. It's very important. Just like before, we could not just divide the 4 into, into the 8. Now, there is another way to write it. Some people like to write this, and they divide separately. So what they're really doing is 2 over negative 2 plus 7i over 2. And what that leads to is negative 1 plus 7 halves i, or 7i over 2. doesn't matter. This way is just an alternate way of writing this. 2 plus 7i over negative 2. You do what's comfortable for you. Now, notice we have 5 plus 4i in the bottom, so we need the conjugate. Remember, we're not playing whack-a-mole, so we are not going to multiply by just 4i on the top and bottom. If we did that, the i would just bounce back and forth forever and would never go away. So we need to multiply by the conjugate, which is the same thing, only the opposite sign. And don't forget the parentheses. So the top, I'm going to distribute the negative 6i. So that will give me negative 30i. Negative times negative is positive. 6 times 4 is 24. And I'm going to get i squared, which again, remember, is negative 1. So the 24 will become negative. On the bottom, always remember you're going to end up with a negative here because you're doing plus times minus. 5 times 5 is 25, and remember, the inside term drops out, so you just have to do the first and the last. 4 times 4 is 16, and then i squared, which again is going to become negative 1, and now that minus 16 is going to become a plus 16. So what do we have on the top? Well, we have negative 24, we always put that first. If you need to do that in the next step, that's fine. Minus 30i all over 
25 plus 16, so that's 41. And now we know that we cannot reduce this at all because 41 is a prime number. So we're done. All right, we have a compound, a subtraction on the bottom, so we need to multiply by 3 plus 2i, top and bottom. We cannot play whack-a-mole. Only difference here is now we have to foil on the top or double distribute, whatever. So I'm going to do that right here. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 2i is 4i. 3 times i is 3i. And i times 2i is plus 2i squared. We're going to put in parentheses and immediately cross off and put negative 1. On the bottom, remember, I'm going to start with a negative here. I'm going to just do first and last. So 3 times 3 is 9. 2 times 2 is 4. And I'm going to get i squared, which again is going to become negative 1. And that's going to become plus 4. So let's clean this up a little bit. On the top, I have 6. The 2 becomes negative. So 6 minus 2 is 4. Plus 4i plus 3i is 7i. And at the bottom, I get 9 plus 4, which is 13. 13 is prime, so is 7. Nothing breaks down. That is my answer. And that's it.